Hello there ASP.NET Web API fans and welcome to our first lesson. Now before I go diving into anything .NET related, I think it's very important for us to take a few moments to cover one of the tools that was introduced in the first video, that being Fiddler. Now once you've downloaded and installed that application, go ahead and open it up. Now if you're already familiar with this tool, please feel free to skip ahead a bit, but if you're completely new to this, I want to give you a brief introduction to what it is and how we're going to use it throughout this course. And it also happens to be a very good segue into HTTP. Now I will grant you that this is a very busy interface and there's a lot going on, but please don't feel overwhelmed because really we're only going to use about 1% of it throughout this course. So all you really need to do is understand a few of the basic features. Now on the left hand side we have a session view which is going to help us to monitor all of the outgoing requests and incoming responses to a particular server either somewhere out on the internet or on our local network. On the right hand side, we're able to create HTTP requests as well as dig into the responses that are coming back. Now we're going to spend most of our time on the Composer tab, so go ahead and take a look at that. And we're also going to spend most of our time on the Parsed tab. Now there's some other cool features that you can do on the raw scratch pad and options, but we're really just going to stick with Parsed for the most part. Now the Parsed Composer section has three main areas. We have the URL that you're going to send the requests to. So in this case, by default, it says example.com. The version of HTTP that we want to use. Now we typically use 1.1, so we're just going to leave it to the default there. And we have a drop down box that lists a number of words or HTTP methods. And we're going to spend a little bit of time going over what some of these methods are and how we're going to use them in an upcoming lesson. The next section is the headers section of your request. So this is really just an area where we can define a list of name value pairs that we're going to send off to the server along with our request that kind of define some information not only about our request but also some things that we're expecting to get in return and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Finally there is the body section. Now with some types of requests or some methods we can actually send data across as text in the body. Now not all methods need a body or even allow a body typically. Get for instance you typically don't send a body along with, or if you do, the server is really going to ignore it because it doesn't have any value for a get request. So you could start to type something in here like, hello there, and it's actually going to turn red. And that's Fiddler's way of saying, hey, you're typing something in here and you really shouldn't be doing that because there's really no point to it. So we can go ahead and back that out and it's all happy with us again. Now, one thing you're also gonna notice if you first start this up is you're probably noticing by just throughout this video that this session area here is starting to fill up with some stuff. And that's because a lot of applications, believe it or not, and if you weren't aware of this, this is something interesting to note, that a lot of applications on your system are very chatty by nature. And by chatty, I mean they spend a lot of time sending requests and getting responses over the internet or over your local network. Now for something like a course like this or a demonstration, that can get very annoying and quite painful to sift through, especially when you're looking for something specific. So one thing I've already done here is if you take a look down at the bottom, if you take a look at where mine says web browsers, yours probably says all processes, and that's what it is by default. So it's monitoring the traffic of all processes on your system. Now I've already changed it over to web browsers so that I can kind of control what I am monitoring, and it just kind of makes this view much cleaner. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like to actually use this tool to create a, a request. So I'm gonna go into the URL box here, and I'm gonna to go to www.google.com just as a simple example. Now I'm going to leave this as a get request because when you are using your favorite web browser, when you type in www.anything, what it's going to do is it's going to send an HTTP get request to whatever URL you've typed into your address bar, send that off to that particular server with that method and any other data headers and body you have specified or that are just kind of put in there by default by your web browser, 
and receive a response. Now, the way that Fiddler works is you can do all that by hand, specifying all of these things by hand, and then hit execute. Now, I'm just gonna leave what's in here by default because it's not gonna hurt anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit execute. Now, a couple things have happened here. We see that we've actually got a session into our view over here. Now I can double click on this and it's gonna show me more detail about the request and also the response that came back. So we've kind of hopped over here to the inspector's view, which lets us pick apart our request a little bit more so we can see the headers of the, requ of the request. We can see the full text view. As you can see, there's really not a whole lot in here to, to talk about as of right now, but we could also take a look at the raw. So now the raw view is the actual text that was sent to port 80 on the Google web server, which is by default the port that is used for all web traffic. So you can see we sent a get request to httpgoogle.com using HTTP 1.1 with these two headers that were specified in the previous view. So it's kind of nice. So as you can see here, HTTP by default only really deals with text. So you could really do all of this stuff using say something very simple like Telnet and Notepad and, and do this exact same thing. Now on the bottom, you're gonna see the response that came back from google.com. Now there's a lot of different tabs down here, so you can slice and dice this in many different ways. So you could take a look at just the headers if you'd like. So here's the response that came back. Uh, just the headers, you'll see that it was also speaking HTTP 1.1. It sent back a 200, which means okay, and that's something that we're gonna cover also in another lesson, but when you send requests and you, you get back a 200, that really typically means that, hey, the server processed your request uh, successfully, and it's providing you with the response now. And a whole lot of other name value pairs that came back from that response. You could also look at the full text view, which is everything that came back in that response. And if you look at this closely, you'll see this doc type HTML element here, which means this is an HTML5 web page, really. So that's really what was sent back. So if you were to actually take all of this data, copy it out and save it into a document, with an HTML extension on it and then open it up in your favorite web browser, you're actually gonna see Google's homepage, which is a pretty cool thing to, if you think about it. Now there's a number of other views that you will be able to poke around in here. Now really a lot of these, you're not really gonna see a whole heck of a lot in or much that really makes any sense to you, but you could also go over to the raw section. Now this is the raw text that came back from our HTTP request. Now here's all of the headers that came back just like we saw in a previous view, as well as the actual response body. And like I said, you could actually copy this out and then open it up in another web browser and it will look just like Google's homepage. Finally, one other thing that's gonna be coming very important is being able to see the formatted response that came back. Now, when we're dealing with formatting and what's called serialization later on in our Web API project, we're gonna see that we have a little bit of control over that, but it's more important that we respond to the requests in the way that they want. And we're gonna get into that later when we start talking about serialization and some of these headers that we set in our requests. But when we do that, we're gonna be able to typically see responses in two formats, that being JSON, which there's nothing here because it did not send a JSON response to us, or XML which it didn't do that either, because once again, it was HTML, which you could see in the raw tab. So that's pretty much the basics of how this tool is gonna work and how we're gonna interact with it. And now that we have a good feel for this, let's go ahead and get into HTTP.